Hey guys, welcome back to It Takes Two. I'm Quinlan. And I'm Emily. And today, we're gonna talk about pets. You know, little furry dudes, maybe some little scaly dudes. You know, we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna let Emily start first, because I've got about too many pets to count. So... We'll let Emily go first so I can slowly, like, get through my list and just chop through it because it's going to take me a while. Yeah, this episode is mostly just going to be Quinlan because I have, I've only ever had one furry little bestie in my life and he now lives with my parents. (laughs) So, (laughs) so my precious little baby, his name is Tobias Bear. (laughs) We all call him Toby, also known as Super Puppy, if you were here for that episode. Super Puppy! That's Quinlan's favorite part. (laughs) So I got him when I was in eighth grade. I got him for Christmas in eighth grade. Somewhere on an actual, like, tape recorder is, like, the video of when my parents brought him home. He was under my Christmas tree in my bedroom, and then they, like, called me in there, and all of a sudden I heard crying, and I was like, no, no. That is so cute. I feel really bad though because at one point I was like messing with my mom's old like VHS camera and that tape just happened to be in it. So like in the middle of that video is a little like clip of just my face because I accidentally recorded over it. (laughs) (laughs) That is too funny. My mom does know about this. It's okay, but it's a little disappointing. But to be fair, it is on VHS. So like... It's on VHS, so. <laughs> but he was so small when I got him. Mm-hmm. He couldn't jump on my legs. Oh. Like, he had to go down to my ankles and then, like, crawl up and then, like, crawl up me. <laughs> He's so he cute. He was so small. And I mean, like, he only weighs 10 pounds now. Mm-hmm. He's a half and he's Yorkie mix. I think he's 50 50. He's precious. He is. He's adorable. He has a lot of anxiety and knee issues, but I mean, so do I, so... So, I think it's a a perfect match. It really is. He's an old man, though. Not, like, old, old, but, like, a year ago, he slipped a disc in his back. Oh, no. He was not having it, but it was, like, in concept kind of funny that he just, like, slipped a disc, but I was like, oh, you poor baby. It's proof that he's old now. (laughs) It's adorable, because... Last week of us recording this was his eighth birthday. So, like, he he's just precious. And it's so cute, too, because his birthday is, like, a week after my mom's and your birthday. So. Yeah, yeah. Birthday twins. <laughs> should I should I start with my my list now? Yeah, I don't really think there's anything else to say about Tobias other than he likes to sleep upside down and snores on his back. That's so precious. Just like my dad. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love that. He didn't do that his entire life. Just like in the last three years, he's decided to sleep on his back, paws up, and snore. That's so cute. I have videos of this. (laughs) That's absolutely adorable. So we'll start with my puppy. Because he's the oldest, and it just kind of makes sense to bounce off of yours, your doggy, and my doggy. I got Champ. We better we better discuss his full name. That better be. Oh, we will. This. We will. Okay. Okay. I want to. I'm going to tell how I got him because it's very similar to yours. I got him for Christmas, fourth or fifth grade. Fourth grade, I'm pretty sure. I wrote an essay. Uh, what I want for Christmas or what I deserve for Christmas. It was like a persuasive essay on how I said I wanted a dog. And that Christmas we got Champ. Um, he is a redhead ginger poodle. Fits in the family. Well, he was. He's a toy poodle. As he got older, he started to lose his color and he's a blonde poodle now. But we first got him, he was bright red, like Brighter than my hair red. Like, he was glowing red when we first got him. So, yeah, I've had him since fourth grade. So, he just had his 14th birthday in July. In July, yeah, it was his 14th birthday. So, he's getting old now. He's really an old man. <laughs> he's getting old, yeah. Um, But you would never guess it. Like, we just had him 
um, about around a bunch of people last weekend, and all he wants to do is just run around and play and fetch, and you would never guess he's 14, which is kind of, it's cute, but it also makes me really sad because he is really old, <laughs> you know? But I'll talk about his name now because I think it's literally the cringiest but funniest thing ever. This is my favorite part about Champ. <laughs> oh, I know. So his name is Champ. As, like, we call him Champion, you know. As you do, you create hundreds and hundreds of nicknames for your dog, right? But when we went to go, like, do his papers or register him or, you know, whatever you do with a dog, I have no idea. I was eight or... Yeah, eight when, you know, my mom did all this stuff. But you can't name your dog Champ or Champion unless he actually is some sort of a winner. Like, he has that title of champion, which obviously he didn't because he was a puppy when we got him and we decided to name him Champ, you know? Why is there politics in the dog naming world? Exactly. Like, it was his name, but they said, no, you can't do that. And instead of just naming him, like, Greg or something, just off the wall, my mom decided to take it to a whole new level, okay? Champ's dad, his name was Duke, okay? And we called Champ Champerton. Or, you know, kind of, you know, Champ. Like I said, dogs and pets just end up with millions of nicknames. So, like, it started as Champ, Champion, and then Champerton. And, like, it just kind of evolved. And so my parent, my mom, decided to name Champ. Dukes of Yamperton. So his official name is literally Dukes of Yamperton, which is just the most random, oddball name. Like, <laughs> so after we got Champ, um, had him for years and years and years, that was the only pet we had. Well, we had birds growing up, but we won't talk about them. That was, those those were Kenna's thing, not really uh, <laughs> my thing. But when I turned 18, I went and adopted a cat. My sister, my dad, and my mom are all allergic to cats. But you just I went was for 18, <laughs> and I decided I'm adopting a cat. So I went to the animal shelter and I got Pudge. My bedroom was in the basement of the house, so it was completely separate from the rest of the house. So even though everybody else was allergic, the cat really wasn't in any common areas. He was literally in my room and then in like the unfinished part of the basement. So he really wasn't bothering anybody. So I have Pudge still. He is five. He just had his fifth birthday a few months ago. He's younger than I thought he was. I know. But yeah, I got him when I was 18, so he is a orange, what, tabby? Orange tabby? Is that what they're called? I have no idea. He's an orange cat. I think all orange cats are tabbies, so. Yeah, he's an orange cat. He looks just like our cover art for this one. <laughs> he literally looks exactly like the cover art for this one. I tried so hard. These are our pets. It looks just like they all three of the pets look exactly like what they actually look like. It's very great representation for sure. So yeah, Pudge, still have him. He is more of an outdoor kitty cat. He does his thing outside. I have tons of stories about that. I can tell some later once we get through this giant list of other pets. Well, you better explain how he's Perry the platypus later. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll make sure. Look, see more peas right there. Perry the platypus. Yep, that's Pudge. Yeah, I still have him. He's mainly an outdoor kitty. He comes home to eat dinner and that's pretty much about it. I don't see him very often, but it is what it is, right? So next would be Widow Guy. He is a leopard gecko, and he literally is giant. I've never seen another leopard gecko look as giant as he is. He literally looks like he could be a dinosaur, like he is a descendant of the original dinosaurs, you know? I'm surprised he's still around. PC said their life expectancy is like seven plus years. Who would have thought for as small as he is? In captivity. Mm. So wild, not usually, but in captivity, yes. Yeah, he is, what, four now? Wow. Yeah, I guess you've had him basically the entire time I've known Pacey, so. 
Yeah, so I think he's four. Next would be Gizmo, which is my Pacey's <laughs> ferret. <laughs> you do not claim him. <laughs> yeah. He has a bit of a sad adoption story. We got him from Petco, and he had been returned three or four times before we adopted him. Three or four different families adopted him and then decided, I can't handle this, and then they returned him. He was kind of a demon, though. Oh, he is, 100%, and Poe is too, so I'll tell you about Poe in a minute, but Gizmo now is very calm compared to what he was when we first got him. He's four now, I think. Or is he three? He's three. Gizmo is three. And he's definitely calmed down. He's not so much like, I have no idea what a baby ferret would be called, but like a puppy (laughs) stage or like a kitty stage, like all this extra energy, you know? He'd just like latch on your foot and not let go. I had to wear horse riding boots to her house if he was out because he would latch onto the thick leather and not let go of my foot. No, he was crazy, okay? And, but now he is, he's super sweet. He still, like, steals stuff, and I don't think people realize that, like, some places, ferrets are, like, not allowed to be pets. Really? Because you can train them to be thieves. That's iconic. Isn't that crazy? The first few weeks that we had uh, Gizmo, he stole my phone and hid it underneath the couch. He wasn't that big when you got him, and your phone was huge compared to him. Yeah. Yeah. And now, he he doesn't steal stuff very much anymore. More or less his toys. Like, we'll pull out his toys and then he, like, finds them and slowly hides them in new places, you know? That's Gizmo. Next would be Penelope. Uh, we got a double P in that <laughs> one. <laughs> if you don't name your kid something with a P, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. I think we have to. I think we have to figure something out, right? You do, because everything in your life has a P in it. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. So, Penelope, we'll call her Jelly, so I don't have to worry about the P as much. But that is her nickname. That's what we call her. Oh, I didn't even tell you Pudge's full name. Oh, no, you didn't. Pudge's full name is Pudge Von Colonel. After some characters in Looking for Alaska by John Green. And it was also kind of because he was half a pound when I got him. And so Pudge was kind of ironic because he was literally like the runt. He was barely bigger than my hand. He's huge now. And now he's huge. So it it's kind of ironic. But Penelope's evolution of her name comes from we didn't have a name for her at first we were gonna call her luna but that was so basic you know and so we just started calling her baby girl and at that point in time we were watching criminal minds Mm. and Derek morgan calls penelope garcia baby girl throughout the entire show so that's pretty much where we got penelope from that's awesome though i love that isn't it i know i don't think you ever explained that to me i love that (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) But that's how we got Penelope. But now we just call her Jelly. We called her Pajelope because she was, like, broken. And then we called her, like, Jalopy. And then we decided to call her Jelly. So now she just goes by Jelly. She is a little broken, though. She is. She really is. There's something wrong with her, I swear. Every day I think something else could be wrong and... She'll, like, eat my plants, and then I'll look at her, and I'll catch her, and I'm like, dude, stop eating that plant. Like, that's gonna make you sick. And then she'll look at me, and her cheeks are just completely swollen. Like, her whole face is just blown up, because they're not okay for cats to eat. So I threw away a bunch of plants, which really hurt to do, but she was demolishing them, and it was making her sick, so. I've never seen a cat not be able to cat as much as her. (laughs) She literally can't do anything. She'll, like, poop in the litter box, and then she comes out of it and then scratches to try to bury it on the outside (laughs) of the box. It was like, dude, you're supposed to do that on the inside of the box. (laughs) She she can't cat. There's there's no doubt about that. 
She gets stuck in the blinds and the curtains all the time. Yeah. And, like, at this point in her life, she is two and a half years old. She should not be getting stuck in blinds. She should know how to retract her claws and just unstick herself. But no. I have to help her out pretty much every day. Or she just shreds the whole curtain all the way down. It's funny when you watch her do it, because you can see the realization on her face of, oh no, I'm stuck again. (laughs) What do I do? But she just looks at you like, mom, mom, (laughs) what do I do? (laughs) What do I do? Exactly. That's like what she does. Exactly. So that's, that's my jelly. She loves me the most out of everybody. She is definitely my kitty cat, which is great. Um, Probably because we got her during quarantine, so she's pretty much a quarantine kitty. And at that point, we were doing online school. So I was with her, like, all day, every day. She did my Zoom classes with me, you know, like... She would just walk across. We'd be in the same class, and I'd just be like, oh, there goes Jelly. (laughs) She's just walking by. Yeah. So that's my Jelly. A little while ago, we got... Did we get... I think we got Pineapple next. Who is Pineapple? Our lizard. (laughs) We have two lizards. I mean, I knew you had more than one lizard. I just never knew its name was Pineapple. Yeah, so we stuck with the peas. She's, like, bright yellow. I don't really talk to her or see her ever because (laughs) she's on, like, the brink of death. Oh, no! Every day I see her and I'm surprised she's not dead yet. I feel like most of them are, like, Pacey's pets and, like, you're just the adoptive mother. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. She doesn't eat is, like, what her deal is. Like... Oh, no. Whittle Guy eats like no other. He would eat 50 mealworms if you'd let him. But she won't even touch one. That's so sad. I think we saw... Lila was over the other day and... We saw her eat a giant mealworm, and that's, like, the first time I've ever seen her eat in the months that we've had her. Wow. And she's tiny, and these- Pacey buys the super mealworms, because Whittle Guy is so big that, like, he needs the big ones. So, she went pretty ham on that thing. But that's Pineapple. Not much else to say about her besides every day I'm surprised the Grim Reaper hasn't came and (laughs) taken her out. All I imagine is, like, the Grim Reaper from Sims. Oh, yeah. We are very much Sims people. Yes. We talked about Sims and Minecraft. We actually do play the Sims. (laughs) We actually do play the Sims. (laughs) Unlike Minecraft, where... (laughs) (laughs) We just just watch people play Minecraft. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then I think that takes us to my last pet, which is Poe. He is named after the great ninja warrior uh, Jack Black himself and Kung Fu Panda. As he should be. As he should be. So yeah, his name is Poe, and if you thought Gizmo was crazy as a child, you are lucky you have not seen Poe. Yeah, I've only seen his little face, and he looks mean, so I couldn't imagine if you let him out. And he's like twice the size that Gizmo was when we got Gizmo. He's huge. And he's mean. First time Kenna and Lila were over here, and I was like, oh, look at the ferret, blah blah blah, he's running around. He bit McKenna's butt cheek. (laughs) Bit it. She had teeth marks and like a little bruise on her butt cheek from- The ferret biting her. That's just vicious on another level. Isn't it? I have to wear socks and shoes every single time they get brought out in my own house because I'm afraid he's going to bite my toe off. I'm guessing you have to wear more than Crocs then because I feel like he could get into the little holes. Yeah, I, I usually just wear my Crocs and then I'll only sit on the couch when they're out so I can like sit crisscross so that my feet are completely underneath of me. But still, that's that's how they are. We let him out pretty much every day for a couple hours in the morning, and I have to hide the whole time. I'll be like, Pacey, can you go get me my coffee? (laughs) Can you grab me my sweater? Like, I won't get off the couch because every time I do, Poe squares up with me and he's like, oh, you think you're going to go down the hallway? No. Let me just jump up and bite you real quick. Wait, is Poe nice to Pacey? Oh, yeah. Why are they all nice to Pacey, but their demon spawned the rest of us? I have no idea. Pacey is Dr. Doolittle. He is. He really is. This one time. Pacey, if he's listening, he's gonna get real mad I share this story, but there's only what, like, only so many people that listen to this, you know? So Pacey will lay on the ground and, like, hang out with them. See, I hide on the couch. I do not let my- I- I can't. They'll bite me. 
Pacey will lay on the ground and like lay under a blanket and just hang out with them and they'll just like crawl all over him and cuddle with him and hang out. But one day in particular, I don't know what was going on with Poe, but he grabbed Pacey by the face, little paw on each cheek, and he got in Pacey's nose and was like eating his boogers. Ew. <laughs> and Pacey <laughs> It was so gross. Pacey's shaking his head back and forth, trying to get him off, you know? And Poe is like held on. And like, I'm sitting there watching this. And Poe is like swinging back and forth with Pacey, but he is not letting go. He is latched onto his face eating his boogers. And I was like Oh my gosh, I wish you had that on video. I know, I really, but like, I don't record them often. Yeah. Because they just bite me anyway, you know? It was literally the funniest thing. And Pacey, he shook for so long and Poe held on. He held on. I have no idea how, but it was crazy. It's that crackhead strength of he was like, I'm determined. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. I was completely shocked with how long he held on there but that's the last of my of my pets you left out a big one we have a tank full of like bottom feeders right now usually you want a good amount of bottom feeders to regular fish because you need some regular fish to poop so the bottom feeders can eat it you know fish but right now our whole tank is practically bottom feeders i've got some catfish that are really giant a pleco one singular fish, I have no idea what it is, but one singular fish. And then I have a few loaches. I love that Jelly stares in the fish tank, but not at the fish. She just stares into the tank. <laughs> and then if something swims by, she like swats at it, like, what are you doing? But like, she doesn't miss, I mean, she misses, like, she doesn't hit anything. I think I also have a video of her just scratching at the tank, but there are no fish in front of her. <laughs> She's, like, she's broken, I swear. She never once has, like, tried to climb in there. And, like, we have the filter. Like, you could get to the fish from the back of the filter. And never once. She used to sleep on top of the tank. And it has the little, like, feeder latches. Like, so you can just, like, click it open and you can drop your food in and then close it. She would sit on it and open it up. And then she would never even notice or, like, try to go through the little feeder hole. She's just, she's special. She doesn't look at you. She just looks through you. Yeah. There's something off about that poor Jelly. Not only is Jelly a little broken, whenever I stay at Quinlan's house, she refuses to leave me alone. She's obsessed with the air mattress that I sleep on. Mm -hmm. So every time I come over, she pops it. And I end up sleeping on the floor by the next morning in a really weird position. (laughs) And I am very allergic to 90% of cats. So she always tries to sleep on my head and I'm just like dying. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, when you come over, I like make sure I vacuum a day prior and I like dust a day prior. So I can get all the cat hair, like get rid of it and then have the rest of it settle before you come in. So it's not just like cat hair everywhere you know and so I prep because I I mean like I said like my parents and my sister are allergic to cats so like I know (laughs) yeah you do a good job of that because whenever I'm just like hanging out at your house I almost like never feel it which is great Mm -hmm. until she comes and tries to sleep on my pillow next to me yeah exactly and like Pudge really took like a liking to Kenna Probably because I went away for college, you know, and Kenna took care of him for, you know, the first year and a half, two years that we were living on campus. So Kenna lived with us for a while and Pudge immediately came back and was like, Kenna is my, is my person. And like, every time I'd be looking for him, he'd be like sleeping on her pillow. For some reason, that's just where they sleep. I don't know. Jelly sleeps on Pacey's pillow. They just know for some reason that that's, that's where they're supposed to go. I have another broken jelly story about pillows. One time I was laying in bed and then I hear this noise and I just think it's Penelope like kneading at the pillow, getting ready to lay down because she always slept on Pacey's pillow. Like that's just where she slept. So I just assumed she was like getting her bed ready. 
She's making some biscuits. Gonna go lay down. But then I start hearing some more noises and I'm like, that's not normal. She was eating the pillow. She was biting it and tearing the pillowcase. And this is like Pacey's like childhood pillowcase. No! <laughs> that he's had since he was little. It's like Hulk and it's it's seen its better days. It is an old, old pillowcase. And she tore it to shreds before I even realized what she was doing. Because I was trying to go to bed, you know? Like, I wasn't really paying attention to her. I was trying to sleep. And then when I realized what she was doing, the pillowcase was in... Poor pillowcase. She didn't actually eat it. She just just shredded it. Like, was biting it and just ripping it into pieces. That's quite rude, Penelope. Um, Penelope is been outside maybe once twice you know like on accident she's like ran out the door and we you know get her back inside and pudge is a outdoor cat i thought he spent 99 percent of his time outdoors until about a couple weeks ago and i found out that he has an entire second life that he has been living he's perry the platypus he's perry the platypus since we moved into this house he has been Living, living, I don't know, really, but living at the neighbor across the street's house. She called me one day and said, hey, like, I know you don't know me, but your cat hangs out at my house every day. I feed him. We hang out and cuddle on my couch. And he's acting kind of weird. And so, anyway, he fi- he was fine. Turns out he's fine, but... Come to find out, since two years ago when we moved in, he has been regularly coming to her house, cuddles on her couch, and she feeds him. And she knows that her neighbor also lets him in and feeds him occasionally. We thought he was just out hunting this entire time. I thought he just spent his days frolicking in the sun and catching birds. But turns out, he has an entire second life that nobody knew about. That's still hilarious to me, because he doesn't even cuddle you. He doesn't. He is not a cuddler. He cuddles Pacey occasionally, and he used to cuddle Kenna occasionally, but not regularly. And now, I know that he cuddles some random lady every day. Pudge, if you're listening, that's very rude. That's very rude. That's what I tell him. I get mad at him. I'm like, you didn't come home for dinner on time? Probably because you were getting fed at somebody else's house. So, whose fault is that? He's like, now you know all my secrets. And he comes in eating like he's never eaten before. Yeah, he comes in and he's like scarfing down food. Like, it's been days since somebody fed him. And I feed him every single day. He always comes home for it and then leaves again. Occasionally, in the morning he comes in, he eats maybe a couple bites, and then he leaves again. He is never here for more than ten minutes at a time. Speaking of pets that love to eat, little Tobias is driven by nothing in life but food. (laughs) He's smart enough to understand that he only needs to do tricks if there's food involved, and if he can't see it, he's like, nah, you're not getting anything out of me. I will not sit. (laughs) Somewhere I have a really funny picture of when he was a baby, and he was sitting on my lap in the car, and we were picking up food for something. I think we were going back to my school for an event, or whatever. He dove headfirst into a bag of taco time. We joke that we should have named him Tater Tot because the because his favorite thing in this entire world is fried potatoes. Whether it be French fries, tater tots, whatnot, if there's potatoes and he can smell them, he goes for it. He's a potato man. He is. My dog is also scared of so many things. Boxes? One time my grandpa did, like, put a box on his head, and since then he was, like, freaked out about boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't explain that one. But he's scared of boxes now. Until, until one day, I got pizza. Not, like, classic pizza. It was California Pizza Kitchen, a Thai chicken pizza, which peanut sauce, chicken, cheese, greens, all the fun stuff. Not your classic pizza, but delicious. You ever get the chance to eat one, it's my favorite. (laughs) But obviously, it was a peanut chicken pizza. I stood up for two seconds because I was eating it in my living room. 
I stood up for two seconds and I hear my dad just start yelling at the dog. Turns out he had opened my pizza box and pulled a slice out of it and was rubbing <laughs> away with a slice of pizza. That's that's smart. And I mean, the piece was as big as his head because he's not very big. <laughs> He, he got the goods, man. He was gone. He did. Thank God my dad caught him, though. Mm -hmm. Tobias has tummy issues. He would not have been happy, but he would have been so happy. <laughs> when, I when I first got him, I used to take guitar lessons in this little strip mall that had a Hawaiian barbecue restaurant next door. So one day we just got some Hawaiian barbecue. I love me some good Kahlua pork. I bring it home eat some at our dining table. Then I get up to go do something. I leave the box there, push in the chair. He's maybe five pounds at this point. None of us thought he could get on a chair. <laughs> he sure got up in that chair. And by the time we found him, he was inflated to twice the size he was. His belly was like dragging on the floor. No. <laughs> because like cabbage... Dogs aren't supposed to eat that much cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> he was so tiny at the time, too. We were so worried about him. Oh, yeah. But, like, he was so happy. He would have kept eating. He ate half of that meal. And, like, it was a packed, like, big square to-go container. And my mom texted me recently that they got the exact same Hawaiian barbecue the other day. And Tobias tried to, like, break into it. He remembered. <laughs> what a familiar scent let me eat it all well i think that's all we really have for you guys today if you didn't know we don't script these out beforehand not one of our episodes is scripted sometimes we come with concepts like we will be talking about our top five favorite halloween movies we might have a list but we never know what we're gonna talk about no that's how we ended up at minecraft we were reviewing high school musical too minecraft Minecraft. You know what? If you don't like High School Musical and Minecraft, what are you doing listening to our podcast? Truth. As always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at takes2 underscore pod. Our Twitter is takes2pod. And then our Spotify and YouTube as well is it takes 2 So... Don't forget to follow, like, you know, do all the things. And with that, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, Cub Scout.